Hi, my name's Jason Rowe. I'm a freelance travel photographer, filmmaker, and tutorial creator for Lightstalking and Fotzi.com. In this short video, we're going to look at 10 handy Lightroom classic hacks that you really need to know. And we're going to kick off with number one, and that's moving the catalog. Now, there's two reasons why you might want to move the catalog. First is space, the second is speed. If you're running out of space on your hard drive and your catalog is filling up too much, then you might want to move the catalog to a larger drive. Also, if your catalog is running sluggishly, then moving the catalog to a faster SSD drive will drastically improve your Lightroom performance. Now, it's important to know that the catalog is actually independent of the image files. You can have the catalog on one drive and you can have the image files on another or even spread over several drives. So to move the catalog, you need to locate it first. In Windows, you go to Edit Catalog Settings, and uh, for this demonstration, I'm on Mac. So we go to Lightroom Classic Catalog Settings, and you can see here, you've got the location of the catalog, and if we click on Show, that will open it in the Mac Finder. Now to actually move the catalog, best thing to do is open up the catalog folder and you're looking for catalog.ircat and you're looking for previews IR data and you're looking for smart previews IR data. You may not have that if you don't have smart previews switched on, but uh, in this case we do. And what you want to do is you actually want to right click and copy them. Don't just move them because you may actually just move them. You want to keep a backup. So copy the three items and then you're going to Go to a new location and set up new folder and drop those catalog, drop that catalog into that new folder on your new drive. The second uh, hack we're going to look at today is changing your crop overlay. Um, many of you need to crop your images and um, you may well be aware that you can put up an overlay that helps you guide when you're actually cropping that image. Um, but there are actually uh, several different variations of that overlay, um, all based around common compositional rules. So let's have a quick look at that. If we go over to the develop module, to change the crop overlay, we need to actually be in the cropping tool. So we'll select that and see we're actually in the cropping tool and we currently have the thirds overlay selected. Now say we want to change that, we go to tools and we go to Crop Guide Overlay. And as you can see, we've got a number of different rules here that we can choose from. I will select the golden spiral. And as you can see on the screen, we get the golden spiral coming up as of the crop overlay. And if I move my crop, we can see that that overlay moves with it. Now we can also change the orientation of this overlay by going to Tools, Guide, Crop Guide Overlay, and Cycle Overlay Orientation. So as you can see, the crop of this uh, spiral has now moved to the right-hand side, lower right-hand side of the screen rather than the lower left. Our next hack is the ability to compare images during editing. Now, many of you will be aware that we have the compare uh, function available to us in the library module, whereby we can actually select two images and select the XY icon down here and look at the two images on screen. However, if we go back to the single image, we can also do the same in the develop module. We have two variations on this. We have RA and YY. RA allows us to compare two different images. So if we click on RA, we have our active image that uh, we've brought over from the library module here. And we can now drag, we can drag a secondary reference image into the left hand side such as this. Now if I actually do uh, some exposure work on the uh, active image you can see that we can see the edits carried out on the active image whilst the reference image remains the same. Now this is really ideal if you've got a series of shots and you want to match your images to a reference photo. Let's just reselect our active image again. And if we go over to YY selection, what that does is it shows us the original version of our image and it also shows us the edited version. So it's almost like taking the history all the way back to the beginning and seeing on the right hand side, seeing all the edits that we've carried out. It's a very useful tool for um, comparing images and for editing to a particular reference image. This next hack is really useful for improving your workflow speed. You can copy both edits and metadata from one image to the other. To copy an edit, you go to the develop module, right click, 
Click on Settings and then Copy Settings. You can see here that we've got all the different edit possibilities that we could have carried out. Now you can select all of them, you can select none of them, and then you can go through, for instance, just select white balance or treatment profile, color, saturation, etc. You then click copy, go to the next image that you wish to work on, right click on that settings and paste settings. And that will carry over those edits to the next image. Copying the metadata is actually best done in the develop module. So if we go to an image, we bring in here, we can see keywording, and we've got the keywording here. You go right click, metadata presets, copy metadata, and then you've got a selection of different uh, metadata information that you can select from. You then click copy, and you can then paste that metadata to a series of images. Um, by holding the control or command key, right clicking metadata preset and paste metadata. I won't do this because the in this particular case because these images are already got metadata in them. But it's a very handy tool. Both of these are very handy tools for rapidly getting through your workflow, particularly if you're working on images that are very similar. Next up, we have an incredibly powerful hack that many of you may not know about. Basically, it's an, the ability to reset and edit very, very quickly. And to do that, for example, here in this image, we are in the develop module and the temperature is set at 7,741 7, degrees K. If I double click on temperature, it resets it to the default camera setting. And I can do the same here for, for example, the clarity. Double clicking on that will reset it to zero. Now it's not only that, it works in a whole range of different parts of the develop module. And it also works for whole areas of the develop module. For example, if I double click on tone here, that resets exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. And if I double click on presence, that resets all the texture, clarity, dehaze, vibrance and saturation. And it works in other parts of the um, the develop module as well. For example, here I've got the saturation sliders. If I double click on that, it resets all the saturation sliders to zero. Really powerful tool for resetting your um, image back to defaults. Next up, we have a very simple hack that allows you to hide the Lightroom panels and give yourself some more real estate when actually working on an image. Very simple to do. Um, beside each of the left, right, upper and lower panels, you've got a little triangle. Clicking on that will slide that panel out of the way. So there we've got rid of the presets panel. Here we've got rid of the editing panel. And at the bottom, I've already got rid of the uh, film strip. I can return that by clicking again. And I can return the upper panel by clicking again. So cycle through the panel, just click on the little triangle, left, right, top and bottom, and it will give you more real estate on your Lightroom if you actually need it. Next up, we have another simple hack, and that's changing the mask color. Um, if you do a lot of brush and mask edits in Lightroom, you'll know that the default mask color is red. Now, obviously, that can be a problem, for example, in this image where I'm working on a red bus. So if I put up a radial filter on this, draw around, and you make sure that you've got selected, show selected mask overlay selected, and you can see that the red on the red is not ideal. If I want to change that color, I simply press Shift and O, and that will take it to green, or I can press Shift and O again to take it to gray, and Shift and O again will take it to neutral. And cycling once more, Shift and O will return it to red. Really handy little tool, especially if you're working on colors that are clashing with your mask. This next uh, hack is more of a vanity one than a workflow based one, but uh, you've got a Adobe Lightroom Photoshop Classic logo up here. You can actually replace that with your own logo. Now to do this in Windows, you need to go to Edit Identity Plate Setup, or in Mac, you just go to Lightroom Classic Edit Identity Plate Setup, and you change this to personalized, and then you can literally just drag an image onto, the, onto this section here, and it will replace the plate with your own logo at the top here. Simple vanity project, but uh, it's nice if you've got clients visit you in the office, they can see your logo actually in your Lightroom Classic. 
Next up, we have uh, an incredibly simple hack that uh, allows you to look at your image um, very carefully uh, under a very neutral scene, and that is to go full screen. So you select your image, this works in library or develop module, and you simply press the F key. And you can see here that uh, we've got no distracting background, so we can analyze the image for exposure and color, and we can cycle through the images and just check them and we can zoom in on those images as well whilst in the full screen mode. To get back to the main browser, just simply press the F key again. There are times when uh, Lightroom's tools are just not quite cutting it in, uh, when it comes to editing your images. And you might need to take that image over into Photoshop to get what you wish to achieve. Uh, it's quite simple to do this directly from Lightroom. Uh, select the image either in the library or develop module right click on that image and then select edit in and select edit in Photoshop. This will now open Photoshop and open that image in Photoshop. You can then carry out the edits that you wish to do. Um, for example, in this one, I will just take out all the saturation. And then to return it back to Lightroom, we simply save that image and if we now go to Lightroom, we should see that image turn up in Lightroom. And there we go. You will still have your original image here and you'll have your edited image just there. Really useful to have um, this round robin workflow between Lightroom and Photoshop. So there you have it, that's 10 useful Lightroom hacks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, don't forget to give us a like, a thumbs up and a share. And uh, if you really enjoyed it, why not drop us a subscription? We hope to produce lots more videos fairly soon, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, and even better, a subscription. If you want to stay up to date when we publish new videos, ring the notifications bell. See you all again soon.